So here we're going to have a look at collision theory and what the term activation energy means with reference to this theory. So if we start off by looking at a pretty common, pretty straightforward, pretty sort of cr very important reaction for our world, such as the formation of water. So if we have one molecule of oxygen, you're acting with two molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of water. Now, what actually happens when this reaction occurs? Well, if we have one molecule of oxygen bonded like this, so we've got we've got two. Uh, we draw it the structural formula of each of these, and we've got one molecule of oxygen. We've got two molecules of hydrogen. And so what actually happens when these react when these are uh, when these three molecules react to produce water? Well, the way that they react is that they collide with one another. So when a reaction occurs, such as the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen, the reaction occurs as a result of reactant particles colliding with one another. So if we have this oxygen molecule and these two hydrogen molecules, if they all collide together, then uh, sometimes they will produce a water molecule. So that is how a reaction occurs. A reaction occurs when reactant particles collide with one another and through that collision, they, uh, their bonds break and they form new bonds as part of these new molecules. So what happens, we've got these three molecules here, they all collide, their bonds break, so we have two oxygen atoms and four hydrogen atoms because all the bonds in our first, in our, the four molecule, in the three molecules that we started with have broken. So these three, part, these three particles all collide, all their bonds break, and then we get new bonds forming, like this. We get two water molecules forming. So that is what happens when a reaction occurs. However, not every collision between an oxygen molecule and two hydrogen molecules will result in the breaking of bonds. Not every collision between reactant particles will result in a reaction. The collision between these particles here must have sufficient energy. So if this co collision occurs with very little energy, then, reaction, then the reaction will not occur. This collision needs to have a certain amount of energy in order for the reaction to go ahead. And so we call that amount of energy that this collision must have, we call that amount of energy the activation energy. So if these three molecules collide and undergo a collision with an energy less than the activation energy, then no reaction will occur. However, we can also denote activation energy by Ea. However, if, uh, if these three molecules undergo a collision uh, of an energy greater than the activation energy, then uh, a reaction will occur. So we can express this by saying that we can express this by saying that if so if we say EC is the energy of the collision between these particles so if the collision energy is greater than the activation energy so we have enough energy we have more than the energy that we need then we will have a reaction. If so greater than or equal to. So, and if the energy of the collision is less than the activation energy, then we have no reaction because the molecules are not colliding with sufficient energy to uh, to break the bonds. And so, what happens in this process? They could, let's say that our collision energy is bigger than our activation energy, and we do have a reaction occurring. Well, this is a two-step process. The reaction is so the molecules collide with energy greater than the activation energy. Like, like we have on the top line here. And what that means is that all the bonds in our reactant molecules are broken. And so to break the bonds, breaking the bonds requires the absorption of energy. So basically what this means is that these molecules require an amount of energy equal to the activation energy in order to break these bonds. It takes a certain amount of energy to break these bonds and that amount of energy is what we call the activation energy.
So basically, these, these particles are absorbing energy, and that absorption of energy is what is causing the bonds to be broken. And then when the new bonds are formed, when the product molecules are formed, uh, that constitutes a release of energy. So when the, when the bonds are formed in our product, energy is released. So it's a two-step process. We start off with our molecules. They collide with an energy greater than the activation energy. And so that energy is absorbed. Uh, and and when as that energy is absorbed, all these bonds are broken. Now, as as bonds are formed in our products, that that causes a release of that energy that was absorbed, of all or part of that energy that was absorbed over here. All or part of that energy is then released as new bonds form. And so, we sort of get this graph. If we were to graph energy against time then we would sort of have, just roughly for now, we would sort of have something that looks like this. We would have the energy of our reactants, and then we'd get an absorption of energy, and then we'd get a release of energy, and then we'd have our products. So this is the energy of our particles. So the energy of our particles increases as the bonds are broken, and then as bonds formed, they release energy. And so that is the process of energy in a chemical reaction. So we know that when we have, if we want to apply this to an example to help us better understand a real world example, then let's look at the petrol in our car. Now we know that petrol is flammable because we, we burn it to gain energy, we burn it to run our car, we burn it to, to make fires sometimes and various other things. We know that petrol can burn. However, if we fill, fill our fill a tank with petrol, we know that petrol isn't going to catch on fire by itself. And the reason for that is because the petrol, so we know that when something burns, the petrol will react with oxygen to produce products. And is this reaction that releases energy. And so we know that uh, the reason that petrol and oxygen, why, so we're wondering why doesn't our petrol just burn? If, if petrol and oxygen are together, why don't we just see it burn straight away? Well, the reason for that is because the activation energy for this reaction is quite high. The activation energy for this reaction to occur is such that we need some sort of flame. We need a spark. And if we have a spark in our petrol sample, if we, if we apply a spark to our petrol sample, then that spark will provide enough energy it will provide energy greater than the activation energy for the reaction and thus the reaction will be allowed to occur. So first of all, we need a spark to provide the activation energy or what we can say is we need a spark to overcome the activation energy energy barrier. Now, we know that when we light petrol, however, we may light it with a spark and then the petrol starts to burn. However, we can take the spark away and yet the petrol will continue to burn. Now, why is that? That doesn't really make sense. If we're providing a bit of, a bit of, if we're providing the activation energy for a little bit of petrol to start burning at the start, and then we take that spark away, so we're no, not providing any of the remaining petrol with activation energy. How come that remaining petrol still burns? Well, what happens when we burn petrol is, yes, we provide the activation energy to burn a little bit of the petrol at the start, then we take our spark away. However, as that little bit of petrol burns, as that initial bit of petrol burns, it releases its own energy, and that energy that it releases can then provide uh, the activation energy for the net for another chunk of the petrol and so as the petrol burns it releases energy and it is that energy that allows the surrounding petrol to burn so so the energy released through burning provides the activation energy or E subscript A. And so that is an analysis, that's an explanation of why petrol works the way it does. Petrol doesn't burn spontaneously because it needs a spark to provide the activation energy. It needs a spark to allow it to overcome the activation energy barrier.
petrol continues to burn once it's lit because once a little bit of petrol burns, it releases energy and that energy allows the rest of the petrol to overcome the activation energy barrier. So that's how reactions occur and that's what we mean by activation energy and it's that, and so it's a very significant concept when we're, just, when we're talking about why reactions sometimes do and sometimes don't occur.